Well, hello there, you wonderful humans, and welcome to Nightingale. Super excited about the release of this game. I have had early access, so I do want to say thank you to the people at Inflection Games for providing me early access to Nightingale. We will be starting fresh today. Uh, and I haven't actually paid a lot of attention to the, the story itself, so a lot of this I'm actually going to be going through with you with the story. We're going to be going through the character creator, um, the intro to the game, and kind of progressing through it. Now, I do have another character here that's not super far in, but I have done a lot of farming for building and things like that. So we may swap to this one, so that way I can switch to a character that has... You know a stockpile of resources for us but for the most part this whole stream will be you know creating the character going through the introduction getting to our first realm uh, exploring some of the first realms and things like that uh, so I really do hope you all enjoy it if you do make sure to hit that like button only time I'm gonna say it let's go ahead and uh, start a new profile here we'll go through the character creator the character creator is actually pretty in-depth it's interesting so we're gonna spend a minute here <laughs> Uh, Justinia, thank you for the 40 months. I'm doing well. How are you? And Blue Stash, thank you for the 17 months. Um, so yeah, they, they changed a lot of stuff from some videos that you may have seen. They've been updating the game pretty significantly before release. Uh, there's quite a few big changes still underway. I don't know if they released them last night before they released today because I didn't get to play the update last night. Uh, but we'll see. So step one, we kind of get to go through basics. We have an archetype, an age, and a voice. So we'll pick our arc, uh, archetype, and maybe we'll pick... Some of the faces look pretty wonky. <laughs> um, let's see. I think there was one somewhere. Are they all randomized? I'm realizing that they're different each time you go through the character creator. Interesting. Huh. This one seems familiar. There was one in here. That's why I wasn't clicked on the right one. <laughs> Missing the beginning. What is the setting premise of this one? Uh, you can read it on the Steam page, but I guess I'll open up the Steam page and I'll read it here just so I don't get it wrong. So it's you set out on a journey of survival and adventure into the mysterious and dangerous Fey realms of Nightingale. So essentially it's a, what do, what do they call it? It's like a Victorian gas, like gas lamp like magical exploration game. <laughs> I forget exactly what the what the terminology for like the art style is, uh, but essentially it's a PVE open world survival crafting game that you can play solo or cooperatively with friends. You build, craft, fight, and explore as you venture through mystical portals into a variety of amazing fantastical realms. So essentially, steampunk? No, it's not steampunk, not at all. Steampunk would not be the description for it. <clears throat> Steampunk would be not a good description for it. Uh, let's see here. Um, we gotta find a decent face here. Because we can start off with a face, and then we can do a lot of changes to it. Um, yeah, maybe we'll go with this one. But then we can go with age, we can make ourselves- ooh. So our face does change, like, the whole, like, droopiness and all that stuff, depending on the age that you go with. We'll go with, uh, 35. And we can pick a voice. We'll just leave that. But then we have ancestry. So we have a story. So an officer. A military officer accustomed both through rough living and field, um, and cavorting with a regency. Having joined the armed forces at a young age, you're intimately familiar with loss, destruction, and humanity's capacity for horror. So there's an air do well there's a vagrant, and this just kind of changes the look of your starting clothes. So we also have Hermit, which is actually what I started off the first time. A reclusive eccentric, choosing the lonesome wilderness over the bustling city. You work the land, foraging the comforts of modern life, as well as the social decorum in favor of total self-sufficiency. Um, so you can see how the, the clothing changes depending on, on various uh, backgrounds and things like that. Academic. I think I'm going to go with the Hermit. I like it. Nice little purple shirt. So they wanted me to spend 600 hours in character creator, perhaps. How rude. Just wait for this. You can pick a lineage. So what you can do is you can select grandparents and this... So if you have like a bunch of different characters in here, it's 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 kind of interesting. <laughs> I, I don't know what to think about it, quite frankly. So we have lineage, right? So we can, uh, we can pick one of these. And then we need to pick a grandparent too. 
Uh, let's see here. Who do we want our grandparent two to be? There we go. Then we can kind of go down the line, and what this will do is give us a way to kind of merge all of the characteristics from these from these characters into into our character, uh, so we can inherit various traits from them, which is I think is interesting. I've never seen this done in a game before, and I don't know if it's super worthwhile doing. Because this is the first time actually doing it. But we'll find out if it's worthwhile or not. We're just selecting a bunch uh, at random at this point. And uh, see what happens. So we'll go with this fine lady right there. Is this... Where's the... I mean, this ugly bloke. <laughs> actually, I don't know if I want that to be my closest relative. <laughs> we'll go with the bald guy. Nailed it. Sir Baldus Maximus. And then we'll go with... We need somebody with some good looks here just so we can in inherit some kind of good looks. Oh, that's some blush right there. My god. Did we use you already? No. We use you. Alright, then we have our parents, right? Oh lord. Oh god. I think I ran out of good looking people. Do we use you already? Yeah, you're way up there. You you were reincarnated. You know what? There we go. I want to be pale as a ghost. We need another pale dude. You know what? These two are fine looking, fine looking people. Zozo, thank you for the 44 months. Been sick for a week and I still had to work, but today I slept in and was rewarded with a tag stream. Aw, yeah. So then we have us. This is us now. Now we have the inheritance slider. So we can actually kind of inherit traits, like you can kind of move this slider around and it'll inherit more traits of a certain parent than, uh, or one of your lineage or whatever it is. I actually didn't mind it right in the middle there. Kind of interesting. Maybe, maybe this one more, right? Kind of up towards here. I don't know, I think it's, I think it's really interesting how that works. So you can mess around with the different uh, lineages to kind of create a character that inherits traits from all of them. I've never seen it done in a game before. So now we get to go to skin. We're going to be pale as a ghost. Uh, scars and tattoos. Okay, they're not in the game yet, but we can change our hair. I think we'll keep that hair color, but we definitely want a different hair style. I kind of like that one. Can live my hair dreams. Bald. Nope, definitely not bald. We do not have the head shape for bald. Text character with a duck face? Leave my... You can get really weird. I can actually show you how weird you can get with the character creator. So that's just the inheritance thing. You don't have to do what we just did. I do want a fancy mustache, though. The question is, do we want big mustache? Or curly mustache? Or curly mustache with a little thing? Kind of like the big mustache. I want to live my mustache dreams. We got this one. We got this one. This one kind of looks good on us. Big mustache. I think we've never gotten to have the biggest mustache possible before. And I feel like we need to go with that. Go big or go home. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. I'm really excited to see this one. Been here since Ancestors and can't wait to see more of this amazing games you play. Oh, thank you, Greenbrier. You're a scholar and a gentle person. Thank you very much. All right, but we can make ourselves... So, Lexar, when she made a character, all I heard was cackling in the background. Because you can get pretty crazy with the character creator. Um, let's see here. We need brow. I think that's the one. Nope, so we can... Is it ears? There's one, she made herself look like Sid the Sloth, and it was just this mutant thing. Is it eyes? Maybe it's eyes. Detail. Eye shape. Position. <laughs> I, th I think that's what it was. Uh, but you can see there's a, there's a lot of customizability that you can do. Will it be the best? I don't know. But you can do a lot of different things, that's for sure. 
Oh no, I'm stuck with it now. Oh god. <laughs> what have we done? Oh boy, but you can change the inner iris color. There's, there's a lot of customizability here. Um, you can change left eye, right eye, both. Scale? Oh. Didn't know that was a thing. Detail. Oh. Thunder thighs? I don't think we can do thunder thighs. What do we look like without a mustache right now? Because I'm very kind of concerned. I feel like the mustache is hiding some 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 facial fl oh god. Oh god. Yep, we're keeping the mustache. <laughs> oh lord. Anyways, yeah, I just kind of wanted to to mess around with the character creator here a little bit so you, so y'all could see the the potential for what you what you have. I kind of like the 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 grumpy eyebrows, I'm not going to lie. They're kind of, they're kind of okay with me. We just gotta fix the eyes. <laughs> Wait, what about the schnoz? Meh. Gotta give him a pig nose like me. What's the shape doing here? <laughs> I like that the eyes look down at the nose for a second. Oh boy. What, you want me to leave the eyes the way they are? So you can change your Adam's apple. You can change. There's a lot of customization. Give ourselves the biggest jaw in the history of jaws. Ooh. Chin soft and hard. Chin strength. Adam's apple. <laughs> oh, it's a disaster. All right, we'll keep the eyes wonky. Nice blue eyes. There we go. I got eye shape. I uh, I guess we'll make it even worse, huh? Oh wait. <laughs> I don't know if I like this one more or this one more. What do we think? Top right or bottom left? <laughs> Top right or bottom left? Oh my god. Neither? <laughs> oh man, can we get some big eyelashes on here? Oh yeah! Oh what the heck? Okay, we don't need the extensions. Oh, the humanity. I like I'm beautiful. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, we're never gonna see our face anyways. Uh so step three, difficulty. <laughs> I hate it! I hate it. So we have a so we have a couple different difficulties. So you have easy, a survivalist prepper. This will change the clothes that you start with. I believe it'll increase the uh, the cl uh, the clothing rating that you have because there are no levels in the game. Um, so we have hard, unprepared civilian hermit, and then we have extreme, the late sleeper hermit. <laughs> I'm kind of curious as uh, what the difference is here. Ever eccentric, you face countless rejections in polite society, opting instead for the safety of an isolated life with no outside contact. You knew nothing of the coming pale, awaking to find the fog already swallowing your home. Perfect. Then we have realm power. This will so you have 0, 10, 25, 40. Now, I recommend everybody start at 10. Um, the game can be... Uh, a little bit difficult at the beginning. We can also start on hard. The higher the realm power, the more challenging the realm. This represents the difficulty of your starting realm. Each realm you visit afterwards will be different. The higher the realm power, the more challenging the realm. This experience is catered towards player decent, uh, players decently familiar with the survival captain games, but uh, who have never played Nightingale. So we'll, we'll actually do hard for the start. I want to see how that goes. It could not go well. 
It probably, in fact, it probably won't go well. But for the sake of science, we'll click next. Character name. Um. Hmm. <laughs> Sid. <laughs> Nah, we'll go with tag, like usual. There we go. Uh, new game hype. Before time itself. Are running a pool for how long it takes? Oh wait, story. Born of curiosity, we opened the first gateway to our endless Feywilds. The Fey have long since aided men in harnessing that which we live and breathe. Magic. Tolerance was known until your grasp extended reach. Greed, in the face of power, saw your world caught in ruin. And out flowed the pale, swallowing all in its path. Some fled its ever-spreading tongue, seeking refuge in Nightingale. Only to be severed from assistance as the pathway between realms collapsed. But ah, uh, perhaps not all is lost. For Nightingale still stands, pushing forward towards progress and enlightenment. Humanity's final beacon. Your path thither is winding and full of terror's nascent realm walker. Wilt thou succumb to fey lands beyond thy wit? Or wilt thou endure, find the way homeward and rebuild anew? Yeah, welcome to Nightingale, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the game was originally developed in first person. There is a third person in the game now. It is technically experimental, but we can show that off. I've played most of the game in first person, so it's going to take me a second to get used to third person. But you can play both, and you can interchange very quickly as well. Man, we got a dump truck. Um, so yeah, you first person, and there's third person. So when you, if you go to play, if you go to video, uh, there is a enable third person view experimental check mark here, uh, or you can hit F5 to be able to do it. You can also adjust your field of view for both third person and first person. I think we're going to go with, I think we're going to go with 80. Man, it doesn't seem bad. So uh, we'll play in third person for this. Third person is now too sc too scary with the character you made. Third person is experimental, so you might see a little wonkiness How and stuff like that, but fleshling. it's not bad. With a wonder you lost in our Feywilds. Show haste, human. Okay, this just goes back around. I never actually went down that way before. Oh, I like the FOV feature. I always feel zoomed in uh, on first person. Yeah, field of view definitely helps with first and Before third person. Those bound fiends sniff out your shadows abound. Yet, like a fire's final embers, you refuse to be snuffed out. I come with an offer to guide you to a safer realm and rebuke death, unlike so many of your kin. Take these bloodstained cards. Play them, and let amiable bond be drawn between Fay and Fleshling. Give me your hands, that we may be friends, and I shall restore amends. Amosit in kunul ame. Hurry yonder, toward portal and apparatus, so you, bear child of Earth, might abscond this nightmare. Travel to the forest byway swiftly. Across the divide, a greater gift awaits. Partnerships with We Fay afford many wonders yet 
unseen. So this is our first introduction to the uh, the card system. So you're going to encounter these portals throughout the world. You can even make them yourself at a certain point in the game. And we get different cards. So there's biome cards and there's major cards. There's quite a few different major cards and there's three different biome cards. But then there's also minor cards where you can completely change the realm that you're in uh, with various buffs and uh, atmospheres and things like that. So our first one is just going to be, it's a byway card, so this is the intro. You'll never get a byway card again after the intro. Fly, Realmwalker. The fiends have caught your despairing stench. Hello, Natalie, Courtney, how are you doing? Welcome, everybody. I hope you all enjoy the uh, the live stream today. I've been really, really looking forward to streaming this. Uh, as we kind of progress through, I'll kind of give a little bit of my review of the game so far. Uh, Johnny, thank you for the five gift memberships. Thank you so much, and welcome new and returning members. Count thyself among the fortunate few who manage to flee the Pale's noxious proliferation. Nightingale still stands, but Earth teeters on the brink, and these wilds are far from hospitable. Sequestered so and struck by woe begs the question, Wilt thou be a survivor? The gift I promised should aid thy cause. A hermetic guidebook and pocket watch, purloined off the corpse of a realm walker. Keep these like close companions. With the man-made network sundered, entrust me to find the trail forward through these byway realms. In the interim, I hear your stomach snarling. Take reprieve from misery and gorge yourself with a feast fit for a fleshling. Preserve yourself and I shall return anon. Oh, under this mask you wonder. I am Puck. Robin to some. Oberon's merry wanderer of the night. The last Furtive Fay to grace your kind. Well, farewells. <laughs> Farewell, sweet puck. It's not steampunk. Uh, you definitely don't want to refer to this as steampunk. It's uh, like a Victorian gas lamp is what they call it. Um, definitely not steampunk. You'll, you will not see steampunk stuff in this game. Uh, I accidentally... I think when we were trying to describe what it was, I accidentally used steampunk, but that is that is not an accurate description of the art style. But it's, it's kind of set in like the 1880s, uh, 1880s Paris, but with more of a, like a, I don't know, I have a hard time describing it. <laughs> it's cool though, I like it. Dixie, I've been waiting years for this game. I'll be watching every video of yours about it. Gotta wait for G-Force to add it before I can play, though. Aw. Alright, so I'm just gonna collect some resources here. So this is our first uh, forest biome. We're kind of just going through the intro. I'm gonna collect a bunch of these raw berries. Natalie, 16 months, time flies. Thanks for all the awesome content. Thank you, Natalie. Bow, bow, bow. Can't get out. Leave everything alone. <laughs> I need some stones. Don't boo at me, you dirty little deer. So I kind of like... Uh, I, I do kind of have a thing where I go in between first and third person when playing now. It's, it's super easy to do. I usually do first person for combat and third person for like world exploration. Kind of feels nice to do that. Right, so we need to actually eat now. The one thing that I don't like about third person is when you when you eat anything, you can't actually tell you ate it, uh, but you can in first person. It's a little bit of a problem there. All right, campfire. Oh, 
Can we fish and catch sea bass? You can catch. Uh, you can fish. I don't know. I've only fished once. I probably should fish more than that. Um. Now we'll go ahead and do that. Add some sticks in here. Craft up two of those. Oh, thank you, Johnny. That means a lot. Thank you so much. I'm to the video of your live star the other day. Uh, the internet crashed. Everything was a big explosion. Big explosion of terribleness. I really don't want to eat these berries. I would like to save them. Ah, you've avoided embarrassment by staving off starvation. From the lingering scent, your meal was no summer court banquet. But at least you persist. We must carry forth whilst this byway is aligned with another. One which should get us closer to necessities we'll both require. The portal stands nearby. Delay not, for the withering sands await. Do I like the UI changes? I prefer the original UI over the new UI. I understand why they changed the UI, because it's a little bit easier to understand. But I much prefer the, the original UI over the new one. Um, as far as like the HUD goes, everything else I like the changes that they did in the in the sub menus, um, but this I liked it a lot better because now I have to look to the left to like register all the stuff instead of having it in the center of the screen like it was before. Uh, I do not like that change, but otherwise, I get it. I get it. Makes it easier to understand. I'll take these sticks. And we are going to remove. Not move, remove. There we go. I'm gonna need that stuff. Multiplayer right away or after a certain point? Uh, multiplayer is after the tutorial. So you gotta get through the uh, uh, the tutorial stuff, which it's not it's not too bad. Like we're going to the second zone right now, and then we'll be in the main game uh, soon. How does co-op work? Can you play with others straight away, or is it later in the game? Um, so you can play with others once you get out of the tutorial, which is pretty traditional for most games. Uh, but I guess that is kind of unlike survival games, but it's got to get you introduced to the realm system. The second you get out of tutorial, you can play with other people, though. And I'll show you how that all works here uh, once we get through the tutorial. Probably got another, another little bit. Summer runs through my being as blood runs through yours. Yet I've seen that dew men call sweat flow like rivers in our deserts. This heat devours spirit and life alike. How be it? Enduring the elements is part of the realm walker's folly. Pleasure sought through vanquishing hostility. Whether this pleases or not, without shelter and the means to defend it, you'll not last long. Best to test your nesting prowess and avoid exhaustion while I scour for the next byway. Oh yes, the next byway. What about pets? So there's a Twitch drop that's coming out today that apparently has a dog pet in it. I haven't seen any pets and not able to tame any animals. Also, we're in the desert now, which means if we're in the sun, we actually get this heat exhaustion. And if we go into the shade, it disappears. And that also counts once we get our umbrella, which we do not have. Um, but you can use tents and various things to help out with this. Now, the building in this, in this game is very similar to that if you played um, Sons of the Forest or any of those. Cat, can you stop freaking out, bro? He's just sitting behind the TV trying to grab everything. Oh, now you're going to go hide in your bed because you know you troublemaker. All right, we do need a bedroll. And we can take our first short rest. So resting in this game is very similar to... You have, you have short rest and long rest. So a short rest, you can do at any point in the day uh, to rejuvenate your rest meter. I believe it'll also recover HP and things like that too. So better bed, better stuff. 
Uh, didn't you get any drops to give away? I don't stream on Twitch, so no. I need some old sticks. Why am I holding a heart? It's a bag full of berries. That's what I'm holding is a bag full of berries. So you have you have a main hand and an off hand, which we'll get into as we make our first tools here. Uh, so we got to go to crafting. We need hunting knife, mining pick, sickle, porch, and a hood. Oh, I need plant fiber. I'm taking a little nappy poo. <laughs> You totally thought it was a heart, too. So the first three zones, I believe, are all the same. So I recommend uh, exploring the first three zones. There's actually chests, uh, not in this zone, but in the next zone, where you can get some nice little bonuses at the beginning of the game. And I'll show where they are in the stream as well. Um, I believe that is all I needed. I really don't want to get attacked by those robot dudes. Am I still out of plant power? What is this, cape power? Yeah. Ah. Give me fibber! It's more cape power. There's, there we go. What kind of plants are those? Ooh, marigolds. I'm gonna collect these. So, one thing I recommend is collect everything. Everything in this game has a use. Is it the best use? Maybe not, but it actually... There's lots of really good uses for so many different things in the game. I'm going to collect all this Marigold here. So Marigold has uh, hunger mitigation and also maximum stamina, ice resistance, fire resistance, and poison resistance on it. Which is kind of nice. On a scale of 1 to 10, how amazing is it? So I've played about 100 hours so far of, uh, of Nightingale. And um, I'd give it a solid 7. I think, I mean, it's early access. They're going to be in early access for another year. And I enjoyably put about 70 hours into it before I really started seeing the, like, some of the things that where I start getting into the mode of, like, okay, this could be better, this could be better, like, this needs to be changed, things like that. Um, so I've gotten quite a bit of gameplay out of it. Uh, but I would give it, I would give it a solid seven. Um, there's a lot of things that I think need some improvement between combat and, uh, versatility of weapons, um, I guess variants in enemies and things like that. And I'm really hoping all that comes over time as uh, as the game develops and things like that. Uh, there's not a lot of enemy variants, so you encounter the same things, same puzzles, and it does get redundant after a, a period of time. But I really enjoy the art style. The crafting is really good. Um, the versatility of stuff is great. I really like the realm card system. I want to see that fleshed out more with new biomes potentially in the future too. Uh, Nordine, thank you for the 20 gift memberships. Oh my god. Thank you so much. Welcome all new and returning members. Nordine, thank you so freaking much. Good lord. The, the, building is, the building is really good. You unlock different buildings as you progress. It slipped my skull that Earth's great citadels resulted from decades of toil. Still, I expected more than that lowly truss of sticks and the haphazard cudgel you now hold. You'll need better woodworking skills than that when we reach our destination proper. It affords the perfect setting for... Well, we shan't ruin the surprise. Let the colors try. blind me in this game, but and I don't speak care because you like it. Constructs Can you please no save, save five? One final by way of muck and mire. Then this path of beginning shall fork unbounded into five? whatever endings you seek. The colors are blinding. <laughs> thank you for the f oh, thank you for the five gift memberships. Oh, that means so much. Thank you. And if you uh, did get a gift membership and uh, you haven't joined the members Discord, uh, make sure to do that. You'll be able to play along with us in games and things like that. 
Uh, you can join any of the servers that we host. Now, there is no dedicated servers for this. I would host my own if I could, uh, but there are no dedicated servers at the moment. It doesn't mean we can't all play together. Oh, there are chests in here. We got an injury resistance, raw gem, healing potion, and a restful potion. Anytime you all encounter these fey chests, break them. You can actually get the resources. There's actually a lot of stuff in this game that you can break and get resources before you can actually get them. So I recommend experimenting with breaking stuff down. Using the early game weapon, kind of not the best way to do this. This is like the makeshift poopy weapon. Scripted, thank you for the seven months. Who's the floaty dude? He's Puck. A fey dude. How is the stream quality right now? I've never seen this happen on YouTube, but they're telling me that I am streaming at a higher bit rate than is rec what is recommended, which I've never seen before streaming at 1080p. Is the, is the quality of the stream okay? Well, I just want to check. It's not forcing us to 720 or anything is like that, are we? Nope, we're at 1080 60. I wonder if they changed their bitrate compression. Something has changed. It's really odd. Lauren, what's going on? Looks good to you. Nice, nice, nice. If you're watching at 720p and it's below, you can click the uh, the 1080p version. I just checked it is in 1080. Give me. Oh, they made it. No, wait, no, it's breakable. Okay. Give me. Give me. Gimme. Gimme. <laughs> so this is really good stuff right here. So got some hinges. Although the hinges aren't used anymore. They changed the way storage boxes work. This was a great way to make high level storage boxes early, because you could you could get the hinges. But you get hardwood from this, carved hardwood and gilded lumber, uh, which has a lot of nice bonuses to it. It'll be oh my god, my face. I am a I'm beautiful in my own way, okay? Stoly B, thank you for the 20 months. Oh god, we're cucumbered. Oh shoot, how am I cucumbered so bad? Oh. A face only a mother could love. We're not going to break the next box. There's plenty of those that we can do. I just wanted to show that you can and should. You thought there wasn't a weight system here? I don't know why you thought that. It's a survival game. Of course there's a weight system. It's not nearly as oppressive as Pal World or, or most other games, though. It's not bad at all. Why is my chat broken? Going to the swamp now, baby. William Bernard, thank you for the super chat. I could only grab one game in Shrouded and I kill. I can't decide. Oh, I can't decide that one for you either because I haven't played a lot of Enshrouded. I've played a lot of Nightingale. Um, ooh. I don't know. If not for Astaroth's decree, this trek would have been as easy as peach pie. Gabby, thank you for we coming to be here. We Fey are forbidden from consorting with your kind. And while my amity is yours, it behooves us both to move with caution. But enough prattle. 
the bound guard fey archways that align with temporal realms. As they're already acquainted with your despair, those fiends will emerge when you try to leave this final byway. While I know man's impulse is to flee, without pluck you're sure to expire. Prepare yourself, Realm Walker. Once this fen is within our wake, a fine morsel of knowledge I shall bequeath. Ahead lie relics of humanity's future. I would say from the gameplay, I haven't played a lot of Enshrouded. I do know it's very, very good, and I would say in many ways, probably the better survival game. It has better combat, um, but if you want to play with other people, I'd say, I would say that Nightingale is the better cooperative gameplay game, and uh, Travis is the better single player gameplay game. I forgot we're playing on hard mode. I'm about to get Clapasaurus Rexed. We're playing on... Are we playing on extreme or we're playing on we're playing on extreme? Oh man, I made a horrible freaking mistake. Oh, we're just playing on We took extreme equipment, so we're naked. We're naked that's why. Okay, so we're we're playing extreme equipment hard world. Uh cryptic. Oh no. some of that wow of spinach. Do we have a sickle? Oh, shoot. Oh, God, freaking rat, man. I know I need to kill a couple of those, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait and get me some of that wow of spinach. There we go. Weak spot. So, when you hit things in the face, it's a they have each thing has a weak spot and you can stun them by hitting them in their weak spots too, which is super nice. Download is fine, but no upload. Yeah, that happens to me all the time. You got spectrum by chance? Ingots. Okay, I didn't know those were gonna be over here. Let's see what else the uh, the world has to offer us. Some more tin. That'll be nice. Tank is spreading the spectrum curse. Trust me, I don't want to. here. Um, we have a bunch of marigold seeds, which we don't necessarily need. Oh boy, I'm thick. There's a chest over here, maybe. 76% downloaded for you now. Noise. Hope you enjoy playing. Sweet. Shotgun shells. Not gonna need that for a while. Charm of the sniper. And leather. Cucumbered. I need a backpack so bad. There's two chests. Maybe we get a backpack in one of these. 
Nope. You know what? I'm gonna get rid of the stuff. I have so much marigold. How much is that? That's not even weighing down a lot. What's got me so cucumbered right now? It cannot be just the sticks. Kind of is just the sticks, though. Like gilded lumbers. Hey, over here. Let me guess it's not on the Switch, is it? Basically, if the game doesn't look like a like a molded turd, uh, it's not going to be on the Switch. All right, welcome to the... No, you know what? I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I was going to jump off with the umbrella, but I've... Uh, I've learned my lesson many a time. Broken ankles are not fun. What if you did it? Mm-mm. I ain't dumb. I'm a lot of things. Dumb sometimes, but not all the time. Alright, we saw one of the things we gotta kill over here. our first piece of armor. Much better. Oh, do I not have any rocks? Oh, I freaking ate them all. Dang it. Three, six. Grab a couple of sticks. Anyone know when it'll be out for GeForce now? No idea. Absolutely no idea. Okay, so we need three roasted meats. And we need two more healing cells. We're going to make as many as we can. Is it worth buying? I enjoy it. I, I've I've put quite a few hours into it, and I've really, really enjoyed my time in the game. I'm trying to figure out why YouTube keeps saying that there is a uh, I'm pushing too much bitrate. It's very odd. Oh, it's definitely broken. It's saying I should be streaming at 750 kilobytes per second. All right, so YouTube's just broken today. <laughs> oh my god. All right, all right. Okay, waiting on this last piece of roasted meat. going on today. All things are weird today. How about maybe just pop it out. So healing salves will heal like injuries, but they'll also be like an HP uh, recovery thing for us too. Ooh, 
We're starving to death. Okay. Yeah, starving is bad. Turns out. Starving is really, really bad. Right, we got some mixed plants. That's why I wanted to get the the water spinach. I'm gonna go with more stamina. couple of these. Uh, basically, there, there's a way to improve. See, you have the time down here, so you can see how long it takes to craft stuff. This all can be improved depending on bonuses that you provide for certain items, which we'll get into here in a little bit. I asked about GeForce as soon as it went live in their Discord. Uh, they said to keep refreshing, but latest it'll be on there by Thursday. Interesting. Thank you for the heads up on that, Dixie. So, we're gonna eat that new food. I gotta repair items. You've stolen life to preserve your own. A necessity, lest it become a vice. One imbibed by men like dandelion wine. Now. I've led you about around, through bog, through bush, through brake, through briar, and forthwith a temporal realm of abeyance awaits. And so too, Nightingale. First you must oblige your inner essence, and choose the landscape that beckons. Aha, no need for words. We're gonna imagine Only a forest. Thought. I recommend anybody that's playing, choose forest as your first realm. You can do desert or swamp. Desert's gonna suck because uh, of heat exhaustion. We'll get into that in a little bit. You'll see it until you get an umbrella. Uh, swamp's cool. Forest is cool. Desert desert would not be a, an enjoyable first experience. I do not recommend it for anybody getting into it. I would do forest or swamp. Forest being probably the best the experience. Mystery of the whole. Play your cards, but beware. The bound will storm once the archway rouses. Crack their pitiable little skulls. Show no mercy. No mercy shall be shown. Can you move your base to another biome? Yeah, you can live anywhere you want. Um, so all the biomes are able to be um, explored, lived in at any point in time. Um, all biomes can also be reset. So if you go to a portal and, um, and you want to farm up new resources without making the difficulty high or anything like that, you can reset it. But if you have a base there, then it also deletes your base. So as long as you don't reset a realm, you can live anywhere you want for as long as you want. Uh, but most of the time you'll probably end up living in your starting realm, because there's reasons for you to be in the uh, Abiance realm rather than other ones, which is the realm we're going to right now. But you can change it up at any point in time. You can make a base in all three of the starting realms if you wanted to. Uh, but the forest one has uh, prevalent... Just, it, the, 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 the first realm is just really good to live in. Or the forest one, rather. Lots of things to do, lots of resources. That was good. I was hoping there would be another chest up here somewhere. This charm will absorb the impact of a single fatal blow, keeping the wearer alive but destroying their held item in the process. Oh my god. I have never actually seen that one. I didn't know that existed. Dev said that if the same person plays the same three realm cards, yeah, you can go back. You can go back to a realm at any point in time. Uh, the only time you won't be able to go back to the same exact seed is if you reset the realm. And I'll, I'll show how I'll show how all that stuff works. Mm -hmm. 
Those are more 10 ingots, but I'm not going to pick them up because I'm already so cucumbered. <laughs> it's really hard to explain until, uh, until you actually show the process for opening up similar realms and things like that. I should be able to show it on this one, though, because I think this is an actual portal. actually gonna potentially really suck. Fighting level 25 things with level 6 gear is brutal. Gotta make sure to kill all the bad stuff around first before I open this portal. The veil between us. Betwixt. to not be cucumbered. You know, we're just going to get rid of this plant fiber. Oh, okay. So it's not actually going to it's not actually going to let us do it. Okay. We'll keep playing on hard though. Uh, anyways, there's options down here that allow you to reset realms or make a realm private or open. Um we just can't see them right now for the for the intro. But essentially the realm we're going into Remain is one where you can finally get into co-op if you want to. Alive. How big is each realm? It depends on the biome. Actually, that's not completely true. Um, if you're sprinting across it, it can take like five, ten minutes to sprint across, essentially. Sometimes shorter, depending on how much stamina you have. that thing in conjunction with these. <laughs> no, thank you. 98% noise. touch. Hello, Denise. How are you doing? All right, let's go to our first actual realm. You're now done with the realm intro. Walker. Your path forward is winding and full of terrors. Welcome to Nightingale. Survive the realms and rebuild all that has been lost. <laughs> when my husband and I moved, we named our Wi-Fi Spectrum Sucks, but he wasn't a fan. Why not? Uh, so this is the Ambiance Forest Realm. So this is kind of where the majority of your... So if we look at the map, this is how big... This is about the same size as all other zones that you'll encounter. So these are the realms. There's three different biomes. You have ah, forest, swamp, and desert. We made it. With the byways left. Behind, your beginnings have ended. I bid you welcome to the Feywilds in earnest. This realm has long been forgotten by the Fey, left in limbo. But beware, in short time darkness will descend, and with it, Stygian perils. Laying foundations will keep you intrepid, child of Earth. While you play Carpenter, there are nooks in these surrounding wilds. I must scrub for the knowledge I pledged. Yep, so there's a social menu. You do have an in-game name, which you can share with your friends so they can invite you to parties. 
Then anytime you've played with anybody, um, you can see like people that you've played with recently, all that stuff. Uh, we got wolves here. What level are these wolves? We need to get better gear quick. Puck's design is so neat. <laughs> Use that block button. <laughs> Look, I I was. <laughs> the crazy thing is if you if you try and block something like that that's like too big, you'll actually break your arms and you won't be able to block anymore. <laughs> um, let's see. We need to get a we need to go find a home. I know where we want to live. Oh wow, we actually have. We spawned right next to where we need it to be. I'm kind of torn where I want to build the first base. This is a kind of a nice open field here. You know what? We'll just do it here. We need stone blocks and rocks. Uh, so this allows us to to spawn at this place when we when we teleport back to we can teleport back to this spot essentially, and um, this is where players will be able to teleport to if they come visit our realm. All right, so we need stones. We've got meat. I'm super cucumbered. Puck takes babies and makes them change things. That's fun. That seems safe. Boy. How am I so thick right now? Don't mind me, just not wanting to drop anything. <laughs> I don't have a lot in my inventory. It's usually not this bad, I just don't have a backpack. Which means I have no weight. Once you get a backpack, it gets so much better. And you can get a companion, too. Right, I'm just gonna drop some of this heavier stuff. I can come back and pick it up. Yellow, yellow is such a good color on you. I don't, I don't know about all that. Um, boop. <clears throat> this should stay dropped there for a second so we can just collect our stone. Your tenacity overrules the gusts of fate, and this fay you have pleased. Settled here, you'll soon wish to venture farther, the unending lure humankind so often succumbs to. Should you hear that siren call, you'll require unbraided cards and the power to play them. Fortunately, both are close at hand. And here is the knowledge that Robin's friendship affords. Across this realm lie sights of power sealed by your kin long ago. 
forsworn by Fay, even longer still. There are many sites, each granting access to ever more distant <laughs> spheres. Nearest, though, the Antiquarium. Formidable enough for one so green. Excuse me, I'm yellow. You must first gain entry. Passing through a seal forged by those last children of Earth who claimed reverence for our infinite wisdom. They, more than most, knew the gravity of a contract. Their gates bar access to those unworthy, but I see that strange, hopeful spark within you. Nurture it with its own fundament, humanity. Be it comfort, companionship, coffer, I know not. Once within, delve ever deeper toward the pedestal. Upon it lies the means to craft the card you require. Hurry now, fleshly, and prepare. The infinite awaits. The infinite does indeed await. Okay, oh, then my stuff despawn. Okay, did not despawn. Right, we need to make an angling basket here real quick. Uh, this is our first little storage device. Pretty nice and cheap. Just takes fiber to make. You thought his name was something else? Yeah, that makes sense. Ah, so thick! And it's not going to be on uh, on Game Pass. And it's only slow paced when you're actually sitting and listening to the story like I am. There's not a lot of that. We are in the first hour, and always in the first hour of any game. This is actually a survival game with a, with a, with a pretty significant story element in it. Um, which is kind of nice for a change. But you won't encounter that a lot. Like, once you get through, like, the first two hours, pretty much the next 50 to 60 hours is going to be you just exploring and not dealing with any other dialogue and just upgrading and making progress and things like that. So what you're seeing right now is the slowest the game will get. All right, uh, we're going to go get our first person. So one of the things that I recommend doing once you first get in your realm is to go to uh, Huelamino Sase over here at the Antiquarium Site of Power. There's actually a person we can recruit here. I have a tips video coming out later today on the game. Uh, I recommend checking it out, especially like if you're just starting. It doesn't have any spoilers in it. It's just strictly like, hey, these are some things that I wish I knew sooner in the game. Really helped out. Like, oh, you, everybody will be able to have their first uh, company person here in the realm and you're just going to talk to them and then you're going to click this button to let us begin and essentially what we need to do is just help them build um, these three beds right here which you can also use for sleeping for yourself until you start building up your own stuff But essentially what we need to do right now is uh, just get some upgrades. You need to upgrade to power level 20. There are no levels in the game. Uh, all of your levels come from upgrading your gear, crafting new things. Uh, basically crafting new gear, finding resources to upgrade your gear. Because resources kind of have like a latent item level on them as well. So now that we've helped that person, we can actually talk to them again, and we can recruit Lydia. And Lydia is basically our pack mule. We're gonna stuff Lydia full of stuff. <clears throat> so just creeper type move in? Essentially, yeah. So Lydia will follow us around, uh, depending on what weapon or tool we have equipped on her, she'll help harvest things. Anything we put on her person, she'll actually help build stuff as, as well. So if we're building a large base, you can fill her full of stone and wood. And she'll go and place all that wooden stone in the, the pieces that need to be built. It's pretty nice. So it's a very nice companion system. Playing third person for a little bit. See how we're cucumbered right now? Oh, Lydia! Oh, thank you for being my pack mule today, you beautiful human you. Here, take all of this. I don't want to carry it no more. Merry Christmas. Now I'm not cucumbered anymore. 
She is sworn to carry your burdens, literally, which is just going to be stone, ore, and wood. She also helps with combat and stuff like that. Uh, but she doesn't get cu- well, she does get cucumbered, but she teleports around with you, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited for the future of the game. I've, I've played... Like, I, I got super addicted to it. Like, my first... I would say my first couple of hours in the game, like, I I didn't fall in love with it, but then I fell in love with, like, the depth of the, the crafting, the building, um, discovering new resources, discovering stuff in the world. Like, I really got addicted to the whole, like, oh, okay, maybe I can find, like, this better ore to make a better weapon so that way I can start killing things better. And sure enough, I could. And I got really, really addicted to that process. That's not to say that there aren't things that need to be improved, but for the most part, thoroughly enjoyable. My character looks like Freddie Mercury and I'm here for it. Oh my god. We're just going to collect some stone here real quick. This is actually a really good area. Uh, we're going to be able to make a lot of essence from these uh, these rocks that we're picking up. This is actually going to be in the tips video as well. Um, it's kind of a way to get rich early in the game. Do the realms vary a lot? So there's there's three different realms, and they, they really don't vary. I wish they did. Um... So there are some differences. So we have three we have three realms. We have forest. Let me rephrase that. We have three biomes. We have forest, desert, and swamp. But then there's different levels of those. You have like a antiquarium, which is what we're about to unlock right now, uh, which raises the power level of the realm. Then you have difficulties within that realm. So like a realm can start at level 20, but if you turn it to hard, it'll be level 40. And if you turn it to extreme, I believe it goes up to level 60 uh, to start off with at a level 20. And going all the way up to 220 as you kind of progress through the game. Uh, but then you have different, different seeds. So all realms are procedurally generated uh, with various things inside of them. But once you go to a forest realm, you know, like 10 times, you're going to know how that forest realm is laid out. Because uh, at the end of the day, while it is procedurally generated, it's procedurally generated with the same type of things. So, you know, you need to go to a fey portal, or you need to go to a certain area, an essence trader, etc. Uh, so I do wish that they would add some more variants and things like that. But you also find different seeds of that realm where... Um, it's, it's really hard to describe without without actually showing you. It does get repetitive after a while. Even as you kind of progress through the game because you know what to expect by that point. So the shine kind of wears off on the realm system. But, I, but there is systems built into the game where I think they're going to flesh it out over time before release uh, for some more variants. Because I can kind of see the possibilities of this realm system that they've made. And I think it's going to get better over time. Do you have a base yet? Working on building the base right now. You thought the Freddie Mercury thing was done on purpose? Nope, it was an accident. Alright, so we're going to start building our first little base. Now, I highly, highly, highly recommend uh, building a base pretty early on. Uh, because all of your crafting stuff is going to be hindered if it's not built uh, the right way. And we're going to actually go over that right now. Uh, so we do... We can hit R and lower... Eh, we don't need to lower it. Start off with a little square. See how Lydia is actually placing the objects in there because I put a bunch of stone on her. So you can kind of... If you if you fill your, your companion up with enough items, you can just kind of go around and start building and they'll start placing all the stuff inside of it. What we need to make is a simple workbench. And I guess we'll put it right here for right now. And we need some food. Oh! Trees have physics! 
You know what? I'm not going to chop that tree. You know what? I'm going to do it just so y'all can see. It's going to fall on our freaking house. If a tree falls on you, it can and will kill you. I've died so many times to trees falling on me. It's not a fun experience. So beware. Trees falling on your house can and will destroy it as well. Um, so, things have traits, so if you hold E on it, you can inspect it, and you see it we're exposed. So the structure is unsheltered and exposed to the elements, making uh, work more difficult. Consider moving it beneath cover, lest its efficiency dwindle. So, that means if we went to craft right now, these, these rock marbles, we're going to show the difference here. One of these crafts would take 30 seconds, 12 of them would take 6 minutes. But there's a couple tricks we can do. We're going to use... How many stones do we have right now? I have none. Lydia, how many stones you got? 22. There are a lot of trees around. We're going to go with the wood. I actually don't like the wood doorways. I'm going to use stone for that. We don't have the better building materials at the moment, so we're just going to go with flat roofs. Uh, there are different tiers of buildings that you unlock. Right now we have the basic building set. And you can unlock, like, second story, like, more advanced building things for all of the different building sets in the game, which is, I think is pretty cool. So what we have right now is just 14 of the possible 32 building pieces for this set alone. Yvette, thank you for the 41 months. Oh, cucumbered. I recommend not removing stumps if you ever want your trees to grow back. <laughs> so much building. <laughs> yeah. Earlier in the game, the building is a bit of a grind, but you unlock stuff later that helps a lot. My character runs like a gremlin. Yeah, third person is still experimental. Uh, so sometimes you get stuck in like a gremlin mode where you're like squatting all the time and stuff. It's a little wonky. Why not remove stumps? Because there is a spell that you unlock later in the game um, that allows you to regrow stump, like regrow trees, but they regrow on stumps. So if you de-stump an area with a lot of trees, like say your home, like having trees around your home is super nice. And you can regrow those with a spell. Uh, so if you de-stump them, they won't actually regrow. Unless they change that. That was in the early, early access build. It might be different now. But that's the way it was. Puck what you want. Oh, I'm wet. I don't have an umbrella, Puck. God dang it. As a 32-year-old gamer, I am becoming disenchanted. I don't even know what that means. How far you've come, and yet how little you possess. Is it an ascetic purity that keeps thee bound to such homely presentation? No. It seems more apt that thou merely remain blind to all that could be thine. Across these wilds, your kind have proliferated with haste. Industrious, and more than willing to avail amidst your ever-growing need. Indulge their hunger for essence, and they will indulge your want for new 
and novel constructions. Oh, farewell, sweet pucky boy. So long, and thanks for all the fish. God, I need to get some baddies. Sticks and fibber. struck by lightning? I have not. I haven't eliminated the possibility out of my mind, though. Uh, so our first little house. Very nice. Now, you'll notice that if we go to this, we now have sheltered, which decreases the time by 10 seconds. So if we go to craft all those marbles again, it would be considerably less, but I want to do something else, too. And make a nice little campfire because we need some food. You'll notice a green line. That means it gives bonuses to something. Oh, Lydia, come here. Oh, so cucumber. <clears throat> Mixed planty boys. Crafting cucumber. There we go. Now it's three seconds to craft because we have multiple bonuses. So you can see it's sheltered, warm, and well lit now. So like, all of your crafting stations are a benefit from being in uh, in a house, warm with a fire. Nobody wants to uh to craft all wet and nasty. Don't you make fun of my old timey wimey high pants. I know I need better clothes, okay? I'm trying to make some money right now, though. Beautiful. Positively splendid. need some more storage and we need an umbrella does the rain affect you make you like cold and real uh, so yeah it'll when you get a wet status effect you'll get a debuff on here your rate of stamina regeneration is reduced your clothes are soaked through through time uh, will dry out a fire will do much more quickly uh, so yeah basically it also hails in the game the hail will cause you damage and stuff like that. Like, there's environmental status effects. If you're in the swamp water too long, you'll get diseased. And what we're doing right now is crafting rocks into rock marbles, which sell for a lot more of essence dust. Uh, so now we have 1,200 essence dust, which we can use to... Oh, shoot. We need to sleep. 
So there's also, if you don't actually sleep, then there's a debuff from that too. That's not good. Uh, and you'll also notice that when you go to play something, you can see we have comfort, sheltered, and well lit. So we have four bonuses. Uh, which means that is the best optimum, most optimum place for us to sleep as long as we have the fire going. So we're actually going to sleep there. I need to steal some of these sticks. I'm going to take all of them then. Screw you, game. No wonder people were stinky back then. So many clothes with no deodorant. Yeah. Alright, so uh, we don't need the stamina right now. We're gonna save our food until we're hungry. Look at that beautiful mixed berry salad we got. Oh, we do have an umbrella. I'm an idiot. God dang it. This game has a ton of menu time. You don't have to sit in the menus. I'm just doing that because I'm in... Uh, let's see. We need all of these. So these are realm cards. So we have like a, an estate card. This is what you're going to need to buy to be able to allow people to come to your realm. Um, permanently. You can give that to one of your friends and they can come visit your realm whenever they want. And there's different bonuses. So these minor cards right here will change the realm that you're in. It will change atmosphere, bonuses, difficulty, <laughs> all sorts of different things. Now we have the advanced roofs for wooden stone. different lights. Get all of these bad boys. And we need all the different refining tables. We need a sewing bench so we can actually make some clothes. Enchantress focus. You can also buy resources here too. Uh, which can, if you don't want to grind up the materials, uh, you can actually use your essence to buy materials instead of having to farm them up. <laughs> right, so now we got to build all this stuff. But I'm going to take a momentary break, and I will be right back. Un momento.
am I looking at the ceiling? I didn't leave like that. <laughs> Maybe I did. I think this mouse is about to die too. This is the way. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. My schnoz was feeling all sorts of broken. So we need to build the different crafting stations, uh, which means we're going to need a loom. Now I want to make sure all my stuff uh, does have the bonus from the weld because I want to make sure everything crafts as quick as possible. And we're going to put things close together just for ease of familiarity with stuff too. We have a sewing bench. There it is. So I'm going to put the loom and the sewing bench close together. And then we're going to make a smelter. I guess we'll put the smelter in the corner here. Then we have a saw table, which I'm going to put here. We have a mortar, simple masonry bench. Ah, tanning station. We're definitely going to need one of these. Put that right there. We need the Enchanter's Focus. Put that there. And we'll put this right here. Yeah. And then... I'm going to put storage for each of these because we don't have a lot of storage at the moment. We have very little storage options. Uh, eventually, so they're actually working on a bunch of different updates right now Right now, where you'll be able to craft from your storage. Like, uh, basically, I don't know why survival games don't do that nowadays. I think <laughs> all developers should realize that crafting from storage like just needs to be in every game. Uh, but thankfully, they are adding it. I don't know if they have. We're going to find out here in a second. I don't think they have yet, but it is one of the first things that they are going to update, which is just going to be a lifesaver. Like, no no survival game should ha not have that nowadays, especially a survival game with as in-depth crafting as this game. This game has some of the most in-depth crafting that I have, I think, ever seen in a survival game. Been a lurker since uh, Animal Crossing or Assassin's Creed. I don't know which one that is. I love the content, especially all of you done for Pal World. Oh, thank you, Mark. Oh, Megan, I didn't know that was a thing. Aaron, how you doing today? Glad to have you with us. Uh, so, Stamp, you're going to be uh, playing later, you said. That's exciting. So we need lumber for that, lumber for that. Uh, which means we need animal fiber. Which means we need to make this first. We need sticks. Who's got my sticks? We need to make animal fiber, which means we need meat. Which means we need to go hunt stuff. Let's get some some fiber and stuff going first. Aaron, thank you for the month. So do you all like third person more or first person more? I'm curious. I know a lot of people get icked out by uh, by first person when they're so used to playing third person. Uh, you can go in between both in this game, which is nice. Right, so for animal fiber, we need meat. We need two meat per animal fiber. We 
which means we gotta go hunting. Actually, can I make better tools first? I think I just need stone straps. Okay, we can do that. <clears throat> we need at least two straps. Now we can make six straps. Watching in first, but like playing in third. Interesting. Free food! Random world meat, baby! Oh yeah, my favorite. Love when the world just gives us random meat. I subscribed to you when you were playing Ark. Nice, Aaron. I'm glad to still see you here. Are you interested in playing Nightingale? Yeah, I like exploring... I like exploring games in third person, but I like doing menial tasks or combat and things like that in first person in survival games. Because I feel like, especially this game where there is specific points of weakness on enemies, doing it in first person allows it a much easier process of hitting those weak points, which is nice. All right, let's go craft some stuff. My favorite movement mechanic right here. The dodge umbrella trick. I don't want a sling bow. I want a wood and oh stone blocks. Well, god dang it, Bobby. Don't have a PC. You want to play Power World? Power World's super good. Excited for the next big update. They haven't updated it in a while, so I'm assuming the next one's going to be a big one. All right, we want, before anything, we need an axe. We need a mining pick. I like using the axe as my my first combat weapon. The mauls are cool, but they're too slow and they don't crit. So I don't ever use them until late game. Um, we need a sickle at some point. We don't have any more straps. So you can see the item level now, and as we as we equip things, our our power level changes, and these stats will transfer onto our character as well. So it's good. Since there is no levels in the game, it's all based off of your equipment. So you can join a friend that's been playing for a while, and you can get a significant uh, boost to your character really quick. Essentially, like power leveling. I put that in the wrong the wrong hole. I could go, I'll go in there for right now. Hello, you wonderful human. Oh, sweet. We've been around since ACNH days, and more recently with Pal World. Appreciate you and your content. Well, thank you. That scared the bejesus out of me. I forgot that existed. It's been so long since somebody used that. Thank you so much. Um, why can't I see who it was, though? The umbrella turns you off. Well, it's going to turn you on one day because it keeps you dry. Actually. <laughs> Ooh, you know what? What is that right there? That's a higher level one right there. Someone found the test text to speech. Yeah. It just scared me for a second. I was like, oh, God's talking to me. Oh, no. No dodge without a knife or revolver is crazy dumb. It's odd, and it's it's kind of weird to get used to. Honestly, you have blocking with two-handed weapons. But, I mean, if you got a thick old weapon, I don't know about you, but if you're not familiar with combat, then you're probably not going to be dodging super good. Oh, shoot, we did not eat. We have no stamina. Oh. Oh, don't make me give you the Bonk Express 9000. God, 
Lydia needs a better weapon. <clears throat> so, co-op uh, can be done a couple different ways. So, um, when you enter a realm, you have the option to set it to private or public. If you set it to public, then anybody has a chance of actually joining a realm. Uh, it can be completely random. If they happen to draw the seed that you're on, they can you, you can end up seeing random people in your realm. Um, if you set it to private, then the only way you can play with other people is if you invite them to your realm. So you can do that. To, I'm not going to show the party menu uh, because then it gives away my ID and I don't want to be harassed, so I'm not going to open it. Um, but you can see recent players in there. You can see um, people you've played with. Like, so you can see people you've played with recently. Um, and then from that menu, you can invite them to your realm. Um, and you can invite them to your realm when they're... If you only want to play with people when you are online, then you have that option. You just create a party, invite them to your realm, you play together. If you want to play... If you want a friend or loved one or something like that to play on the realm that you live in without you being online, which means they have full access to everything, then you can give them your estate address card and you can build everything together. You don't need to be online for anything. Uh, they just have full access to the realm. Uh, quests are done separately. But say if, uh, if a friend completed this dungeon... Actually, I don't know... Quests are done separately, so... Um, they're not going to be able to progress, like, your home realm. They can do all the stuff on your home realm without you. Uh, but then you still have the freedom to do it yourself, too. But as far as, like, building, like, your house, like, your inventory, like, your house inventory and all that stuff, they will have free access to that if you are offline. So, you only want to give your estate address card to somebody you know and want to play with all the time. Alright, we got three hide and five meat. Five meat is not enough. We need one more. Uno mas. The co-op for this game, I think, is some of the best I've seen. Not only in a survival game, but in a game in general in a while. They put a lot of effort into the realm system and uh, and cooperative play and how these realms stitch together and things like that for progression and and uh, a seamless kind of cooperative experience where it doesn't get spoiled for you. They put a ton of effort into that. And I think a lot of the other things that people are going to have issues with where realms can get uh, pretty repetitive after a certain amount of time. Like once you've gone to a forest realm like 50 times, it's you know it kind of loses its, its luster. But um, I think all of those things are going to be fleshed out because they did a really, really, really solid job with the cooperative experience, the realm system itself, like how you invite people to play. Uh, all of that stuff is really, really solid, which I think is important for what they wanted to build. So I think they prioritized that uh, over some other things to begin with, and I think that was the right choice. All right, so we need to find something to murderize, but it's almost nighttime, which means we need to sleep. Need to, but we should. Do you have to buy a server to play with your friends? No, no, um, you do not. Unfortunately, the game can only be played online. There is no offline uh, local playability. Like, there is no local save either. Like all this whole game is saved online. I found that out the hard way because I had to start over uh, when I changed builds for when I was previewing the game. Whew. No butt stuff, please. Woo! Hello, friend. Uh, yeah, the minor cards help a lot, and I think what they need to do is um, apply the minor cards as one of the roles when you open up a new realm. So that way, I think there is part of that system already implemented. But yeah, like I can change this realm in quite a few different ways uh, with the minor cards. So you do have customizability. It's it's a really, really cool system. It's very unique. I'm gonna go to sleep. 
and we need some pants. We still are completely naked. Oh shoot, angry pigs. Pigs in this game are angry little creatures. It's actually good because we need the meat. need to make food too. Food is incredibly important in this game. Making sure that you're well fed. Like you can get such a massive bonus from food at the beginning of the game. You adore the realm system? Yeah, I want to get a little bit more into it. We need to buy the cards. We need to start crafting the cards and I can show how that works. I knew there was one more piggy over here. <laughs> Waking up house gone, just the bedroll and a one by one stone box with me and a feral pig. Husbands are strange folk. <laughs> oh, that was a little baby pig. We done orphaned it. Whoops. Oh, God. Ah! Jesus Christ, let the tree fall on my head. Uh. Actually, you know what? You don't deserve holding the wood because you put the wood into all the burning holes and that's just not good. How hard do I troll Lexara in our game? No, she trolls me. I'm not allowed to troll. I'll be sleeping on the couch if I do that. God dang. for being distracted. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But uh, we work really well together in games. Uh, let's see here. Activate that bad boy. Right, so we're going to do a couple different things. We need animal fiber. It's going to meet meat. Oh god, I needed. I thought it was three, not four. That's really all the meat that I have, dang. What? Usually, if you're standing next to the object, they'll automatically go into your inventory. Uh, let's see here. We're gonna do lumber. Just gonna make all the lumber. And we're gonna go sleep. Looks like we'll find all the neat stuff in secret caves. Yeah. We have a, a good uh, consistency of uh, finding separate things that we get super nerdy obsessed with. And, uh, and it works well. Alright, so we need bones, bones and wood. Bones. Glass. So we need. Oh, shoot. I never. Did I build this? I did build this. Somebody built this. So we need gems, which is easy to find. We need more lumber, need more wood. Okay. We cruising. Uh, we'll be streaming this together later. Uh, so I kind of wanted to get through like the, the intro of the game, kind of like the, the progression. I do have another save where I'm, I'm technically farther. I'm not farther in the store. Well, I'm slightly farther in the story than this because I've done the first. I want to get the first antiquarium stuff done. But I have a lot of resources farmed up on that save already. Which I want to, at some point, want to hop over to that one. So that way we can, I can show a little bit more of the system without having to farm. Because y'all have seen the farming already. So if you want, what we can do is we can pop over to that save. Where, um, you've seen already in this video all the story that I've covered in that. I haven't done any other story in that other than unlocking a more difficult realm. 
Um, so we can pop over that and we can do less grinding and more actual gameplay. What do y'all think? Uh, thumbs up for that, thumbs down for no stay here. At least there's no butt stallion she can cheese. <laughs> oh, she's super good at finding cheesy things, of getting things early. And that sounds good. Yeah, let's do less grinding, more play. So you're allowed to have four characters in the game. Uh, blah, 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 quit. We'll log out. So that's the beginning of Nightingale. As with all survival games, it's a lot about uh, exploring the world, collecting resources, crafting up, upgrading your character through armor and weapons, and then taking down uh, different realms of power. Um, so we'll go back to my other character. As you can see, I'm still kind of in tatters. I haven't upgraded any. <laughs> I've basically... I, you can still see I still have the same Capulet on. I just have clothing. <laughs> clothing and, and tools. And a bunch of stuff farmed up in a house. And I don't look like Freddie Mercury in this one. Although I kind of grew attached to Freddie Mercury. Anyone bought this yet? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen any reviews. Um, like any official reviews. Usually I watch ACG or um, Nightingale Review. I haven't seen any reviews from... Anybody that I actually trust their opinion on. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> they see me load. It's mixed on Steam right now, but it sounds like people don't know how to use the game settings. <laughs> Is this the, are they saying that it's uh, running bad? I haven't had any issues with it running weird. Is it mixed on Steam right now? That's unfortunate. It is interesting. What are people Welcome saying on there? Welcome to Nightingale, an open world survival no. crafting game set in no. the Did we finally load in? We did. I don't know how people put reviews in within an hour of playing the game. Like, they've actually experienced the game. That's why I, I have a hard time uh, listening to early reviews on Steam. We'll see how it goes by the end of the day, though. You definitely don't know a game within an hour. All right, so yeah. Uh, this is the, the game that I've got, like, uh, maybe t 10, 20 hours on this, on this particular playthrough. Um, most of it is just farming up. Uh, various resources. This is the first level of, of armor that you can get, and I've just upgraded it through an upgrade station where you can use essence uh, to be able to upgrade your armor. Cucumbering is no joke. I do have a, a better umbrella though, which is super nice. Did I build this house? Yeah. Uh, so the building is actually really nice in the game. That's kind of why I wanted to pop over to this one, because we can show more of the building. Um, I've actually chosen to build on top of something called a... Um, a Realmic Transmuter. Now you can make crude versions of these, but I was like, okay, I kind of want to make this part of my house. So that's what I've been working on. You can actually clip buildings into everything in the game. There's no obstruction. You can build anywhere you want. So I've actually chosen to make this thing in the game part of my house. And you can do that with anything in this game. Like if you wanted to build in that cliff, you could build in that cliff. You want to sh shoot. If you wanted to build in that freaking globe thing over there, you could do that too if you want. Although I think that's an antiquarium site of yeah, that's an astrolabe site of power. So that's actually a site of power. You, you would not want to build on that. Um, but yeah, anytime you go to a realm, you can uh, you can build anywhere. Uh, so these are the realmic transmuters, and this allows you to play your minor cards. 
So right now I have an industry card on, which increases the ammo and ingot yield from crafting. It reduces our refinement time as well. And we get double ingots and double uh, ammunition. But the sky is dull and the weather is muggy, which is why the world looks like butts right now. Uh, but what we could do is if we wanted to hunt stuff, we could put a hunter card in. So it increases the yielded gathered from slain creatures while increasing the damage you deal to weak points and decreasing your damage dealt elsewhere. So this actually helps with regular combat in general too, if you're really good at getting crits. Uh, the environment is dull and muted. Uh, but say we wanted to do... I'm starving, hold on. Um, say we wanted to do something that's made the world prettier. We can do Dragon's Horde, Combatant's Workshop. Uh, Settler card is the one I use the most. Or used to use the most, but now it's kind of changed. I don't have any cards that make things pretty. Actually, this will be good. Crafted tool items have durability plus plus plus, and crafted clothing items have durability plus, which is actually nice. So improve the durability of crafted items and have crafting stations always augmented by their ideal environments regardless of the placement. Refinement time is decreased. I want to make new armor for me and Lexara because she's going to be joining us later this evening. I think this might be the best card for that right now. Crafted tools have durability plus. Uh, blocking efficiency, weight, stamina. Setting is autumn. So it's going to change the world too. Uh, I'm going to pop the artisan card for now so you can see how that works. So yeah. Now we've changed the way the world works, or uh, <clears throat> the world looks and the bonuses that we get within the world. Now... So that's how that works. So that's how you change a realm that you're in already. And you can do that anytime you go to any realm. Any realm. So we've done this to our home realm right now. But say we wanted... So now we have an option to go to a different realm. We have desert cards, forest cards, and swamps. And we have different levels. So if we went here... Oh, well, that's actually a reset this portal. I don't know what that is. You have different difficulties. If I want to go to a desert realm... And I want it to be... So there's different types of realms. You have Antiquarian, you have Gloom. So Gloom starts off at 60. Herbarium starts at 50. So you have a base level of 50. But then you can make it a public realm here, if you want. So then you can play with other people. Um, random people. You can play with other people if they're your friends without doing the public realm. You can reset realms, but then you can also change the difficulty. So if we put on easy, it goes down to 27. Medium's 50, which is the normal level of it. You can see because of the card. Then you have hard, which is 85, and extreme, which is 120. So you can change the difficulty, but also the difficulty will dictate the resources available in that realm, which is actually really cool. So I could pop in this realm, which we're gonna do, and we can farm up some, actually... Yeah. The card artwork is Chef's Kiss. Yeah. Uh, so we can do farming, all sorts of stuff. We'll be checking out Pacific Drive. It's a survival light horror game coming out real soon. I, I've i actually looked into that, yeah. So this is all of our base, this is was our basic kind of crafting setup. I've been setting up a more advanced uh, setup over here. So we have different levels of things uh, that we can craft in this area. And I actually want to craft some new armor which I don't have unlocked at this table, which means we need to augment this table with the thing that we need to uh, to upgrade it. So there's all sorts of these, they're kind of like decorations, but they also add bonuses uh, to various things. So we have like the simple map. And if I place the simple map down, you can see that it has like this arrow. It has to be within the range of something to give it the bonus. I meant to leave room on the shelf for this map, and I forgot. Can I put it over here? You can see we have, like, a tea set and some other little things on here. Oh, that's the simple map right there. Let's just move that. I'm going to move this over here for now. Put it here. There we go. 
And now we have different things unlocked here. So we have the cropped breeches, which is felt, thread, and buttons. And then we have an intrepid shirt, which I think looks pretty cool. We need buckles, buttons, thread, and cloth for this bad boy. Uh, and this is what I want to do. So I'm going to pin this. I want to make two of these. So we need cloth, thread, buttons, and buckles. And we can make most of that stuff in here. And uh, this is still the basic building stuff. I haven't unlocked any of the new buildings yet. So we need cloth and thread. So we need two thread, which means we need four if I want to make two of these. And we need two cloth. And a cloth we need four. So that's two. So we need eight. Oops. Yeah. We need eight thread. Eight, ten, twelve thread total. Right? Yeah. That's how math works. So we can leave that going. Now we can figure out what we need for our buckles. So buckles, we need metal plates. And for metal plates, we need three ingots, which I have over here. And so there's various types of ingots in the game. Melee damage, hollow metal is critical damage and stealth rating. I actually don't know, but it does have movement speed on here, which I want to use for this. And we have, like, basically each type of resource has different things. So we have, like, stamina efficiency, range rating, melee damage, durability. Some things are better used for equipment. Some things are better used for uh, for weapons. So multiplayer is locally hosted and doesn't have dedicated servers yet. Nope, it's all hosted on their servers. All right, so we need to make four cloth now. Then we need buttons and buckles. So we need metal plates. Oh, shoot. I don't think I have enough hollow metal. Mm. So buckles is two metal plates, which is six ingots to make one buckle. That's crazy. All right, we're going to use it to make buttons then. We need four buttons. That's perfect. So we do get the critical damage, movement speed, and stealth rating from this. Yeah, the, <laughs> the resources get crazy. That's why you have different Realmic cards that uh, add various boosts. Shoot, I moved the, uh, the wood already. Oh, people are logging into the game. I haven't experienced lag in this game yet until just now. How many people are playing right now? Holy crud. They tested it with 50,000 active people playing. Let's see here. Steam, charts, Nightingale. Forty thousand people on, okay. That's not a bad start. That is on par with uh, with Enshrouded. And Enshrouded was mixed reviews when it first released, too. The reviews were not good for Enshrouded when it first released. All right, so let's make our buttons. This is going to be another grinding game. All games require grand, uh, grinding, but the grind gets significantly easier as you progress. All right, so we got cloth. We've got threads, we've got buttons. I guess this people's downloads are finally finished, yeah. So we need... We need ingots, and we need quite a few of them. We've got critical damage and durability. I've got metal plates tin already. Um, stamina efficiency, I'm kind of curious. 
with a range rating. I feel like that's kind of nice. I'm going to do an experiment here. If we can transfer range damage. And range rating. Basically with any game, the beginning, the beginning can be very grindy because you have bad tools, you have bad bonuses, you have all that stuff, and it just gets easier and easier and easier as you progress. Um, so what I want to test right now, I've never actually tried to do this. Uh, Lexara did all of the cloth crafting, uh, like crafting all of our clothes when we originally did our playthrough. So this is actually all kind of new to me. So when we craft this plate, we're still going to get the bonuses from the copper. So I'm going to craft this up. And then when I make a buckle, the question is, what bonuses am I going to get from the buckle? The game is kind of bad at telling you how this is. So this is metal plates, copper. We get buckles. We only need one. Grinding is rewarded into you, at least. Yeah, it's like it's part of the thing is like experiencing uh, what the game has to offer. Finding new things is exciting to me. Can you wear cosmetic armor too, or just regular? It's um, it's just regular. Also, the items that you use change the way the weapons look. I used copper for this gun, and as you can see, the gun is copper. So basically, the wood, the materials you use for the items dictate how the items look too. So not only are you able to do things that increase the stats of them, but they also change the changes the look of them as well. So I don't know what this armor is going to look like. But if we made a new gun with different materials, the gun would look different. So we've got a buckle here. We need to craft a different... Ah, we'll find out. So we want to make the Intrepid shirt. So we add the cloth here. We add the thread. So we can see we're at 39 health, 26 health. A stealth rating of 1% stamina regeneration. So these buttons, since we use the hollow metal, we're getting an increased stealth rating there of 0.4%. Uh, so we don't get the critical damage and we don't get the movement speed, but we do acquire the the stealth rating on here. And I'm assuming the buckles is going to give us nothing. Yep. Which is a bummer. That was a good experiment, though, because now I know if I made buckles with hollow metal, then we would actually get a stealth bonus rating. And we get to see what it looks like with all this weird stuff we've put on it. I'm assuming our buckles are going to be copper-based. Uh, so this is a top. Let's take off this capulet. Yeah, see, so our buckles are copper. And the uh, the armor itself is based off the type of, uh, of cloth that we used. Those buckles are slacking. They do be slacking. Uh, but if we craft a different one with different metal for the buckles, then I think we can make something even better for Lexara when she gets on. I want to make a better buckle. So we want something... Stamina efficiency wasn't a bonus. Durability might be a bonus. Durability is a bonus. Yeah, durability. So we should be able to make one that is... I really don't want to waste my lacunas ingots, though. Durability 30%. I'm starving. How does the combat feel? The combat is, uh, when you compare it to, like, Enshrouded or, um, or some other games, it's, it's definitely lacking. They've spent more time invested into the core gameplay than combat, and I think combat is going to be fleshed out uh, in the future, but right now it is it is relatively lackluster. It really is. All right, so we're gonna make more durable stuff for Alexara, I think, because I think that's the only bonus we have at the moment. So we need six of these to make one buckle. Scotticus, what it do? How are you doing, you wonderful human? I 
If you're a collectaholic in games, then you are going to absolutely love this game. Everything has a purpose in this game. Um, all right, well, that's crafting. I'm going to upgrade this shirt because I want to see what the item level gets to. Is a similar feel combat to other survival games like Ark or Icarus? Uh, to compare it, I would compare it to Ark's combat. If you've played Ark, then this will feel very, very familiar. All right, so we're going to extract this. We're going to make a new Capulet as well. Better than Valheim combat? Valheim, Ark, this, all essentially the same as far as combat goes. And Shrouded's combat is much better. Uh, but if you've played any traditional survival game, this is on par with that. It's not worse, not better. Buttons, hollow metal, buckles. Oh, we don't get increased durability. I don't know what we get from buckles. We're going to have to... F We're going exploring. I want to make Lexar a very, very good shirt. Uh, I'm not content with the bonuses. There's got to be a bonus from that buckle. This is where my nerd nerd stuff comes in. Like, this is the stuff I want to know. And this is why I love this game, is because it's like, okay, I know I can get a bonus from this, but how do I get said bonus, right? Work and lurk. The game looks fun. Go find all the things. That's what I'm about to go do. You're very good at your job, sir. Thank you, Scotticus. You're a scholar and a gentle person. Thank you very much. Tech is now hyper fixated on buckles. You have no idea. The amount of, of like times like we've gotten hyper fixated on stuff like this is insane. All right, so we got the enchanters. I just built this house, so I'm very confused on where everything is. Uh, we got charms, enchantments, infusions, uh, realm cards. I want to... I want to boost... So we need a forge card, which means I need an ingot. I basically, in the realm we go to, I want to boost the amount of items that we can get from uh, from mining. So I'm going to craft a forge card. I'm going to play it in the realm that we're going to. Forge. Thought you saw guns on the trailer. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a shotgun on me. Go to a herbarium realm. We're gonna go to a gloom realm. And we're gonna no. Yeah. Okay. We're good. Is the magic magic system based on imbuing? Yes. Yes, it is. All right. Then I want to bring a realmic transmitter with me, which means I need five lumber, three ingots, and wire. I don't have any wire, but I can make it from tin. And then I need lumber. I fully started up a Frostalian in Power World. Took a lot of breeding. Ooh, noise. God, I do love Power World. I'm so excited for the future of Power World still. How do you like the card style UI for crafting? Kind of thought me a loop. Kind of threw you through a loop. The, the game, there's a lot to learn in this game. Like an absurd amount of things to learn in this game. Um, it's a little bit daunting. Like, like all of this wood looks the same. They really need to change the way items look in the game. Like all of these woods are different woods, but I can't tell at a glance. I have to hover over each one. There's a lot of things in the game that really annoy the bejesus out of me. And then you create lumber and all the freaking lumber looks the same. But I know that's things that can be changed and I know they're gonna change those things. Plus they're adding storage crafting which we can't do right now but it will be in the game later. Um, the, the game is, conf is can be confusing at times for sure. But... Oh yeah, we opened a desert herbarium realm. It's only level 50. 
Uh, we can go get salt. I can show you all the desert. Y'all want to see the desert? What level is it? I said it's extreme. Yeah. Sure, why not? Can your base be attacked by enemies? If you're in a dangerous realm, yeah, it can. For sure. Uh, I've built in a peaceful realm. So I don't have any issue with that. At the moment. Desert equals death. Uh, we haven't gone over the magic system. Actually, uh, let me see if I can craft some magic here real quick because we might want it. I have Hermetic Flame already. We have Recovery, Charm of the Bounty. This would actually be really nice. Rough Baubles and Charm Twine. Boobly bobbles are made here. Rough bobbles, a stone block, and plant fibber. I'm waiting for that portal to open. Essentially, that's open. We'll, I'll show you later. <laughs> this portal, uh, Dustin, to answer your question, this portal that we just opened will remain existing until I decide to reset it. So even if I close this portal permanently, I can always come back to it by playing the same combination of cards with the same difficulty. Um, let's see here. We're in a 120 realm right now, which is danger zone. I am not item level 120, if y'all if y'all were wondering. So this is a bad news bear zone to be in right now. But I do want to play a forge card here. Because we're going to be mining. And then I'm going to remove this so I can use it elsewhere. Can you build multiple lands? Yeah, of course. You can build anywhere you want. All right, so this is silver. Silver gives critical damage and magic power. Do we know if they plan to add more biomes? We don't have a roadmap yet. We don't know if they plan to add more biomes. I'd say they're probably going to be working on enemy diversity, combat, um, and endgame. There's there's a pretty... The game is really interesting. It has a ton of potential. It is very overwhelming. It is daunting when you first start. Uh, but once you understand all the mechanics, how things work, it's a very, very enjoyable experience in my opinion. If I wanted to build here, I 100% could. This is more silver. I want to get some gold, but I think gold is level 200, and I cannot harvest that yet. Oh, they said they're adding more biomes in the last announcement. See, that's going to be awesome. This game has so much potential. It, it really, really, really does. Uh, so these trees here right now, when you're exploring the realms, you'll notice different color trees than what is traditionally available. That guy will murder us. Uh, if we go up to it, that's level 200. We can harvest this. It's a level 200 tree. That's a level 200 plant. I have it on a very high difficulty, so we're going to see a lot of things I can't harvest right now. But also the higher difficulty, the more prevalent rare resources are. Umbrella is for the rain. That's not what your mom said. Umbrella is also for the freaking sun. Look at that. We're in the desert, buddy. You want to see what happens when you don't have an umbrella in the desert, Mr. Sassy Pants? You freaking overheat. Always have an umbrella in the desert.
<laughs> like sorry just messaged me <laughs> unlimited bag storage no 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 i mean kind of Sorry, everybody. Uh, uh, Lexar just got done with the uh, <laughs> uh, the intro. So our plan was to stream today. And um, and we just switched. I'm trying to hunt down better ingots for the armor that I'm trying to make for her. Uh, but essentially, uh, she just got done with the introduction, trying to see if she wants to join for the, for the tail end of this while we're trying to upgrade uh our gear so i just made this intrepid shirt but i want to make her one with a better buckle because the buckle i used was useless chop you stupid tree how's power world coming along um, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'll make the game. It's coming along, though. Ah, uh, Beaniv. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad it helped. what base she builds. I've been the base builder this time, actually. Um, surprisingly enough, I've been... Uh, we kind of switched roles on this one, which has been interesting. You heard the companions are pretty useless? They're pretty freaking useful. I use them as pack mules. That means it allows me to go out and explore realms and just put everything on them and not have to run to and from when I can do... A ton of harvesting. Also, if you actually spend time upgrading your companions, then they become useful. If you don't touch them and don't use anything with them, then yeah, they're pretty garbage. But if you use your brain and actually try and use them, then they are useful. Um, like, we can put all of our resources on Jacob right now. And now we are not anywhere near encumbered. Oh, we're gonna die. Jacob! Jacob, I'm sorry. I don't have any bullets, bud. Oh, Jacob, I'm so sorry. Oh, we are boned. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it'll be okay. The poison on these guys is really bad. Things are starting to go awry. <laughs> oh no. Oh, now we're screwed. I don't have any potions. Nope. 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 Uh, Austin, thank you for the 11 months. How are you doing? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get away from that. It's gonna take way too long. Uh, but anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, we're about two and a half hours in, so I guess this is probably a good place to stop. We'll be streaming again later today at five. Um, so we'll, we'll take a break here. We'll be playing later with Lexara. We'll get her caught up to kind of where we are in the story. 
and uh, we'll be able to explore the realms with her. So we'll do some cooperative gameplay. We'll go over a little bit more of how co-op works. I've got tutorial videos coming out later today and tomorrow as well, because there is a lot to learn in this game, but definitely make sure to check them out on the channel when they do release. I do hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next